Hi everybody, this is Mrs. Marr, and I wanted to go over a few watercolor techniques. We uh, we seem to have gone a little mural crazy on our in-person days, so I want to make sure you're getting some exposure to watercolor at home. Now that we all have a handy dandy little watercolor set, um, we can do more from home. Uh, now, there's lots of things to consider with watercolor. First of all, you want to be prepared and have everything you need, a nice clean working space. You don't want a lot of little eraser marks and uh, you know, things kicking around like I do right now. Um, you want to have some clean water. Every once in a while you might need to get up and clean your water out, depending on the colors you're using. And you want to have some paper towels handy to dry off your brush. There are specific brushes that are better for watercolor than other brushes. Uh, a softer brush, I tend to like, it works better. Um, at school, we're just going to use uh, the ones we have. We, we kind of use them for all purpose at this point. Um, but at any rate, what I want to talk about is the fact that there are different watercolor techniques that you can use. There are lots and lots. And there's another video that you'll see in this class that, that goes over all those techniques. However, if you're creating watercolors at home, there are some things to think about. First of all, white in watercolors comes from the white of the paper, where when we're using acrylics or house paints, as the case may be lately, um, we, we would mix a white paint in to get a lighter color. In watercolor, the actual paper is giving us it, it's more transparent paints and translucent paints. So we uh, are using the white of the paper to make lightness and the water. The more water there is compared to the amount of pigment, the lighter the color is going to be. Okay, so keep that in mind. Uh, you want to be really limited. Just put the brakes on using black. Uh, we've talked a lot about color theory. So remember that you can get all sorts of tones by using um, complementary colors. Uh, don't, don't run straight to black with watercolor. And I want to show you a few things. First of all, one handy dandy little trick. I'm going to do the sky here and I don't really have a great plan. Um, I have really no plan, um, but I'm going to hold the paper sideways. So hopefully it still stays in the range here. If I can control the shadows a little bit. And what I'm doing is I'm putting down water and I'm going to, let's say these are mountains. Okay. And I'm just wetting it's off, off camera, but I have some water over here. And I am just wetting the whole sky portion of this paper. Okay. Let's just say this kind of top half. And I made um, I made a, a hard edge line where the water is, or where the water stops. I guess I should say. The reason for that is when you're using watercolors, you can do wet on wet, which is kind of fun. I am going to make a kind of light bright day sky, I guess. And I want to have some variety in there. First of all, skies, maybe the sun is just coming up. And I'm going to put a lot of water and a little bit of yellow. Maybe we can make it a little golder. But, but the bottom line is it's still mostly water. And I'm going to have that be on my horizon. Okay. Now the trick to this is the water is going, the, the paint, is only going to go where it's wet. It'll stop when it gets to the dry line. So I'm being really loose about putting this on here um, because I know, unless it's crazy wet and it drips, that it's going to fall right where I want it to fall along where I made that pencil line before. Okay, so my sky, in spite of the fact it's a bright blue day, kind of glowing yellow right on the horizon line. Let's make those mountains. Okay. If I want, I can add a little more pigment and make that a little yellower. But my sky is going to turn to blue. And we all know that 
yellow and blue make green and they really don't want a green sky so i'm intentionally doing this to prove my point that we're using the white of the paper and the water um, and i can dab it off say i don't want the uh white to be up that high or the yellow to be up that high just gonna leave that and then maybe i'm gonna start with some blue and make my blue white is going to be the buffer color so my yellow doesn't mix and we can come up here have that work its way down now i have a big gob on the brush there i don't know if you can see that but that's why it made those lines i want to get that off of there that is messing with my colors um not yet but i could so the bottom line is because it's all wet it's all just going to blend together. It's, it's doing it very lightly there. I don't know if you can hear that. The guy across the street has decided he's going to use his chainsaw to cut some wood. So we're winging it. Hopefully it's not distracting at your end. Okay. If we want that to be a softer mix, we can go in with nothing on our brush at all. And just kind of soften that now you have some watercolor paper it's a student grade paper but we should talk about that a lot of paper that you use has a sizing on it and it's meant to keep things on the surface and keep the surface smooth and white with watercolor the idea is to um, absorb the paint and the pigment into the paper so there is no sizing on it and it tends to be a little firmer okay if you go over it with really really wet paints enough times in a brush you could sort of scuff up the surface and it'll get all nubbies on it um, now because the paint is wet and the surface is wet it's going to spread as much as I want it to spread. Let's say we're getting a kind of stormy sky up in here. Now, the other thing you can do with this is layers. Um, you can let this layer dry and then layer another layer onto the top of it. I'm putting the paint on a little thicker now, so it's more saturated. And uh, let's put a little bit of this down in here. We'll just sort of play that up a little bit later. Um, it, it's more saturated, so it's going to stand up a little more. It's not going to be as washy. Um, then I could go in. Maybe we can mix the tiniest, tiniest little bit of red and tone that down. I go into my blue with some orange if I wanted to make it a more neutralized tone. So let's just say up in here I want to put a little bit. And I could use different brushes to do this too. The paint will start to dry, the paper will start to dry out. So you could um, re wet the paper, you know, re keep re wetting your brush. The more pigment you have on there, the more it's just going to spread out. Another cool thing to do is salt. You could put some salt on there and it will do some cool effects. I, uh, we have some at school that I will show you. Um, that I did with some salt over the summer. Okay, I'm just hinting at a little bit of purples in here. And if we want, we can pop some of that purple against the yellow. <laughs> My light blue sky is changing fast, but... Um, That's okay. It's more to give you the sense that the line stops there. Okay. And if you wanted, you can go in and dab. Be careful. Like if you use the edge of the paper towel, you might get a line, but if you use the middle, you might be able to dab out and make your clouds a little puffier and tone down the texture. 
You can also go in and change the texture by adding another layer once it's dry. But now we're layering in. Let's, let's make this. Maybe get a little bit more up in there. Okay. Um, I'm going to tone down the sky a little bit so it's not as drastically changing to yellow. And we're risking getting greens, but it's such a light color there that we don't really have to worry too much about it. It just neutralizes it a little bit. Okay. So now, in the perfect world, we'll let that dry and we'll just kind of move down. Okay. Um, if I have mountains there, let's Let's put some mountains. Let's take this red and blue. I guess you don't have a purple in this set, really. There's a couple of different blues, though, and you can mix you can mix purple easily enough. I'm going to leave some white mountaintops. The ones in the distance will be softer and lighter. It's kind of a aerial perspective sort of thing. I might leave some white if it's sort of snow-capped. Now here you might want a hard edge if it's one mountain to the next. You can soften that. Maybe even make the mountain behind it even lighter. You want to be careful that the mountain doesn't get up to your sky. Those, those snow caps are coming in pretty handy. Now let's make this one little bluer. I mean, it could actually be a little warmer as it comes towards you. And you could have loose lines there. I mean, if you want to work in that sort of style, you could have a very loose line. I've got a couple different colors on the brush and that's okay. And I know I'm going to have a tree line down here, so... Technically, what um, as colors go back into space and recede, they would become lighter and cooler. You'll have more detail, more variety, um, harder edges, and more warmth as they move forward. These mountains are getting kind of pink, though, because I need to put some more blue down, or that deeper blue. And they'd be there'd be more contrast. They'd be darker darks and lighter lights, all in the same same mountain. Or it could be rows of buildings going off into the distance. And the same thing would be true. The atmosphere affects it and makes it a little lighter and cooler in the distance. Okay, but here you might get more detail going on. Or in the distance you wouldn't. Now I'm still working pretty lightly and I'm cognizant of the fact that I've got some purples up here, some purples down there and blues. It's not going to be all the same, but we want to think about that down here. Let's put some water in and we'll get some of that. Now this we can make very wet. So again, like maybe I'll take this area, wet it. Uh, maybe we'll put a hill in the front, just show some water there. Maybe there's a, there's a river coming in. I don't know. But because it's wet, it's really just going to reflect the sky, but be very loose and flowing. And the more pigment you have, the more you'll see that happening. Maybe we can make it a little purpler where the mountains are. Okay. You can take some
some greens and these are very very green i'm going to mix some golds in there just to tone it down and make your land masses okay maybe put a hard edge line on this where the grasses are here in the foreground and there's some gold on there this is more of a dry brush because i've got some gold on there and some green and not a lot of water okay so it's it's a hard edge and it ends because that's where i put the paintbrush um, in the distance we can wet it make it softer maybe put a little more of another color in there that's very very bright green there you could even to tone that down put a little bit of red in there just to take the sort of acid green edge off of it okay Maybe there's a little spit of land on the other side there okay but our colors are mixing where it's wet on wet um, they'll spread where the paper's wet you can put more than one color on a brush i'm going to come in here and make some trees in the distance which i don't know it depends on how dry those mountains have gotten in the last few minutes it doesn't take a ton of time for this stuff to dry um, and i'm not switching brushes i could but we could get a tree line down here now light would be hitting it i should switch brushes probably let's just say now a tree line wouldn't be a straight line like that really but for our purposes right now it's going to be now i mixed a little bit of red into the green just to get some darkness tone it down the complementary colors Now, I am not saying you need to do like a mountain scene or anything like that. I just happen to think of this to sort of show you a little bit about how differently this works than what we've been doing in class with the acrylics and um, the house paints, the murals, and the rocks, and everything else we've, we've done. I could put shadow on there, start getting more specific. And I'm kind of working from the back to the front, not entirely, but I'm working from light to dark and back to front. And I'm generally breaking it into a foreground, middle ground, background. Okay. Let's switch to a smaller, smaller brush here. Let's see. Now this is the first layer i could go back in there and change this i want to do something with my sky because it just is too too much of a drastic transition there however the other thing i can do i'm going to imagine that this was all dry i can go in and put something in the foreground say i want a tree that's coming here is relatively dry i can come up instead of like a row of trees in the distance that you can't see we'll come up here and kind of make wise what i mean by that is the tree would be thicker at the base and then y off and get smaller up here and then y off of that get smaller up there and just get continually smaller branches as you get further from the trunk and this could then y off of there and off of there and so on okay so that brings 
some contrast down into the foreground. I'm going to get a little bit bigger brush than that. There's nothing that you probably want to be one flat, solid color. Think about whether you want to tone it down by adding a complement. You want to lighten it by adding more water and less water. Um, it's just all sorts of things. And I'm putting a darker color in the foreground, so it's covering the lighter color underneath. And I'm using it relatively thickly. A little blue in there to get some shadowy color to it, too. Um, to cover here. There might be a little more shadow on this side. A little bit of root showing there. But you can use it a little thicker when you need to. I would still go back in and create some shadows and some highlights and some grasses in the foreground and so on. Um, decide where you want your highlight and where you want your shadow. Let's say I want shadow on this side. It wouldn't be everywhere, but... And I might use my blue to create that sense of shadow. Wipe your brush off. Maybe I'm going to lighten some of that brown into gold. Get a little too thick out there. Okay, but the bottom line is you can control that. And then you would go, probably go back and put some texture into it. You could do a little bit of texture at least, even uh, just by dabbing on it. Yeah, maybe that dabs paper towel. There are other things that you can do to do that better. You might even take a little bit of the green. Depending, you don't have to be realistic with your colors either. You can, you can get crazy with them. Depending on what you're doing, what your style is, what your color sense is, there are a multitude of options. Okay. I'm not going to make you watch me do this forever. So um, just think about some of the different things that we talked about and figure out how you can make that work for you. I would definitely go in with more blue on top of that and not, not so green down here. Okay. Uh, we can talk in school if you have any questions, but I just wanted to share a little bit about watercolor with you. Have a great day. Thank you. See you later.